You may have seen the headlines, cloud computing seems to be everywhere these days. But what is it anyway? And furthermore, why should you care? Welcome to Cloud Computing Basics. Here we'll take a look at what cloud computing is and what it means to CA Technologies. To help explain the concepts behind cloud computing, I'd like you to meet Charlie, the owner of Charlie's Chocolates. Charlie's Chocolates is unique because not only does Charlie make fantastic chocolates, he also delivers those chocolates all by himself. He started by doing the deliveries himself. Now he has purchased trucks and hired drivers so that he can devote his time to making the chocolates. However, that means that Charlie is now responsible for making sure that the trucks are running and that the drivers are driving. Maintaining the trucks and paying the drivers is very expensive. Charlie has to pay even if the trucks are idle. With the holiday approaching, he knows he doesn't have enough trucks to make all the deliveries on time. Chocolates may be left on the loading dock, and that means that his business will suffer. Charlie's friend suggests that he contract with a trucking firm. The trucking firm has an unlimited number of trucks and drivers that Charlie can use on an as-needed basis, and he only pays for what he uses. The trucking firm will maintain the trucks and hire the drivers. Now Charlie can devote his time to building his business. As time goes on, his business grows. He expands and now has several shops around town. He even has a corporate headquarters where Charlie's chocolates are manufactured. Now he has new problems. He has to maintain his inventory, provide a website to take online orders, and keep track of expenses. Charlie makes chocolates. He doesn't know about servers, networks, and websites. So Charlie hires a CIO to deal with the IT part of his business. The CIO knows that Charlie worries about having enough computing power at peak times when he needs it, and wasting money on unused computing power the rest of the time. To solve this, the CIO knows he can offload IT services like Charlie did with the trucks. Instead of building servers and deploying applications himself, he can work with other companies to provide him with these services. These other companies have the computing resources he needs, and they're responsible for operating and maintaining them. Now Charlie can access the exact right computing power he needs as a service from a shared pool of resources over the internet, paying only for what he uses as he needs it. This is the concept of cloud computing. He can add more computing power to his business anytime he wants, so the peak season will no longer be a problem. Accessing additional infrastructure capacity over the web is much faster than having a supplier deliver and install new hardware. And Charlie doesn't have to buy, operate, or maintain the servers or storage. This is all part of the service he is consuming. This is called infrastructure as a service. Like the delivery trucks, Charlie only pays for what he uses. That means he saves money. And because it is an operational expense, he can save his capital for investments in his core business. If Charlie needs a new inventory system, he can either purchase software and run it on hardware at his site, or he can use a complete inventory system that lives out on an external cloud. This is called Software as a Service, or SaaS. When Charlie uses Software as a Service, he uses his browser to access the software over the internet. The software is running on the cloud provider's own hardware, so again, Charlie has no infrastructure to buy, operate, and maintain. It's all part of the software service. With software as a service, the hardware and software are shared by many customers while still maintaining an appropriate security and data separation. This means that when changes to the software are necessary, such as bug fixes or upgrades, the changes can be pushed to all users at once. This also means that each customer is always up to date on the latest version of software. As a result of software as a service, the customer always has access to the latest software version. There's no need for upfront lump sum payments for license fees. It's easy to use. Customers are up and running in no time. Some examples of SaaS applications are Salesforce.com and Verve, just to name a couple that we use internally. Once in a while, Charlie needs a specialized application, and his IT department creates that application specifically for Charlie's Chocolates. He can use cloud computing for this as well. Platform as a Service provides software development environments that allow developers to create software applications using environments hosted in external clouds. Then they can run this custom application on the cloud provider's infrastructure where it can be accessed over the web. 
Charlie now understands that there are three kinds of cloud service models, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. But there are some things about cloud computing Charlie should still know. For example, a cloud environment can be deployed using different models. They can be public, private, or a combination of the two called hybrid. Public clouds offer services to anyone willing to pay for them. One of the most well-known is Amazon Web Services. Private clouds, on the other hand, can be within the user organization and operated by the internal IT group using their own servers and resources. Or a private cloud might be hosted off-premise by a service provider operating these services specifically for a single customer. A hybrid combines private and public cloud computing to get the best of both worlds. For example, a service might run in an organization's private cloud, but use resources from a public cloud to handle peaks in demand. This is sometimes called cloud bursting. Charlie's CIO decides he needs an internal computing environment that is agile and elastic. Being in the chocolates business, Charlie and his CIO know there has to be a formula behind every public cloud. That formula includes network access from anywhere, on-demand self-service, the ability to pull from a shared pool of computing resources, the ability to add or subtract resources to match what's needed, and the ability to meter resources so that the users know what they're getting for their money and so they only pay for what they use. One of the useful technologies for making cloud computing possible is virtualization. Virtualization is a way to abstract resources such as servers and storage, separating their capabilities from the underlying hardware infrastructure. With the right tools in place, virtualization can be used to pool your resources so that they can be repurposed automatically for different computing requirements as users demand them. For example, more virtual servers can be provided dynamically as necessary during peak times. This flexibility makes cloud computing possible and is basic to being agile and elastic. One benefit to server virtualization is that by combining workloads, you need fewer physical servers. Without virtualization, the average server is generally used at 10 to 15% of its capacity. With virtualization, you can increase that to 65% or more. As a result of virtualization and the right management tools, the time to acquire and build new servers is reduced from weeks to minutes. New virtual servers don't have to be justified in the same old formal process. Servers are used to capacity. It's not necessary to have or buy as many servers and less power and cooling is necessary, making a greener company. So Charlie now understands the basics of cloud computing and how it might help him. However, there must be some challenges. It can't be that easy. Will his data be secure? Will he be in compliance with appropriate regulations? How easy is it to see what's going on? How can he trust the vendor? What if something doesn't perform as expected? Who does he call? What about reliability? and just where is the data anyway, and who has control of it. The CIO explains that CA Technologies is committed to supporting cloud computing and has products that can help him with these challenges. Our strategy is to make the promise of cloud computing real for customers, and more specifically, to help IT become a dynamic supply chain. This lets IT get its services in the same way businesses like Charlie's might get sugar and cocoa for those chocolates from one source, eggs from another source, and then have the shipping of the chocolates handled by the trucking firm that we discussed earlier. To help IT run this way, CA Technologies helps the customer realize the flexibility of private cloud computing by providing solutions to design, assemble, provision, and scale services. Next, we want to give our customers who can be enterprises or cloud service providers the ability to build and run cloud-based environments themselves. We also enable control of both their public and private clouds by extending security and service assurance across all of these environments. In this way, the customer maintains compliance, security, and service quality even when the services are a mix of internal, external, and virtual resources. Finally, CA Technologies wants to help the customer make the best choices about how to manage their IT services. This optimizes IT's business value by providing solutions that preserve flexibility and choice. To do this means helping measure services 
and providing a standard way to compare different investment and sourcing options so that the customer can make the right decision for their business. So with cloud computing and the tools provided by CA Technologies, Charlie can now feel comfortable that the IT part of his business will be successful and support his business as it grows. And he will be able to focus his energy on what he loves the most, making chocolates.